Hey guys, today in this video, I'm going to share my thoughts on the Adidas Ultra Boost 20 with orthotics. So before I get started, I'll just let you know that I did buy these with my own money from the Adidas store here in Australia. Um, I'll leave a link down below to where I got them from, but I don't have any affiliations or anything like that. So I'm just sharing my thoughts because when I looked online, I couldn't see anything to do with orthotics and the running and running shoes from a runner's perspective. So I thought I'd start sharing some stuff. So I've done 150 Ks in these, okay? Um, I've tested them in long runs, short runs, quick runs, mountain runs, um, even took them for a bit of trail running, um, not aggressive trail running, but a little bit of trail running yesterday. Um, put them through their paces. I've tried them in all conditions, hot, um, not cold, because I'm in far north Queensland and it doesn't get cold, but wet, dry, everything. Just a few stats on them to start off with. So they are a 10 mil drop shoe. So they got 22 mil of foam in the heel and 12 mil in the forefoot. Okay, giving you that 10 mil drop. So they have got quite an aggressive lean in them. First time I've ever worn a shoe with that such an aggressive uh, forefoot drop. And I really like it in these shoes. Um, I feel like it's just sort of leaning me forward a bit, pushing me forward and yeah, helping me to tick those legs over. So the big criticism that people have of these shoes is that is their weight. Now I weighed these ones, they're US size 11, and they came in at 415 grams when I put my orthotics in them. Okay, so that's the caveat there. So my orthotics don't add that much extra weight, but they do add a little bit extra. So I got these, as I said earlier, from the Adidas website, um, adidas.com.au, and I managed to pick them up for $156. They retail for $260. Um, so I'll put a link to where I got them from. What have I been using them for or what do I think I'd use them for? Daily training was what I wanted them for. Um, a bit of a do everything sort of shoe. Um, everything up to my tempo paces and um, just for those long runs and all of that sort of stuff as well. If you want to know my initial thoughts, I did do an initial thoughts video a few weeks ago. I'll put a link to that uh, up here so that you can see. Um, what my initial thoughts, thoughts were and a few of the concerns that I had and some of the things that I liked about it. The main concerns that I have were the weight, okay? A lot of people talk about the weight of this shoe. It is a heavy sole, um, reasonably light upper and whatnot, but yeah, fairly heavy uh, midsole and outsole on it because it does have a lot of rubber, but that's one of the main reasons why I bought the shoe. So the other concern that I had were these uh, little plastic things. Uh, on the back here and how my foot sat in that heel. I'll talk a little bit more about that later. So, some of the strengths. One, the looks. I think they look really cool. I got the bright orange because I just like a bright Larry shoe. And in terms of, as a running shoe, the flared heel, uh, the sock-like sock -like liner up the top, um, all one piece. I just think they look awesome. I'm a massive fan of the look of Adidas shoes at the moment. They keep bringing out stuff that I really like the look of, like the SL20, the Adios range, uh, the Adidas Zero range. They just look good, and I'm really enjoying the look of Adidas's shoes at the moment. Another thing that I'm really happy with is the wear and tear, okay? Yes, it's a little bit dirty. Um, it's a little bit wet and stinky because of my run yesterday. Um, it was That run was in about, I think it was about 14 mils of rain fell in the... Um, the two hours when I was running. For those of you in America using the Imperial system, that's about half an inch of rain in two hours. There's nothing to show that I've run 150 Ks on the upper in these. Uh, if we have a look at the rubber underneath, there is some slight wearing up here, and again, some slight wearing on the toes here. But otherwise, the rubber looks just about brand new, okay? And yesterday, when I was running, I was running down a very steep hill with stairs on timber, um, so much so that I didn't take the GoPro with me because I was just a bit worried about falling over. But these things gripped like there's no tomorrow. Another big strength of these is the comfortable upper. They've got this one piece stretchy upper, feels like a sock when you put it on, just so comfortable, okay? 
the plastic bits on the outside where the laces uh, go into, they strap in, tighten it up on, on the forefoot where you need it, but then the rest can just stretch and move and adapt as you're running along. This, with the combination of Myothotics, has to be one of the most comfortable shoes I've ever worn um, when I'm running. So with my orthotics, I'll just take it out and show you. I've got a on, and this is the less aggressive orthotic, but I've got a fair ball um, sitting here underneath my forefoot. And this is the first pair of shoes that I've run in that that just seems to disappear. And I mean it, it disappears. You don't even notice that it's there. It all just sinks in and feels fantastic. They're the strengths, they're what I love about this shoe. Weaknesses, the heel lockdown, okay? Now, I've had this happen to me three times, okay? And very specific. So it's not gonna stop me from using the shoe, but it is going to impact how I use the shoe moving forward. And the reason for it, I think, from what I've seen, there's not a huge amount going on in terms of stability in the back here holding you in, okay? The other thing, and, and a lot of reviewers have commented on it, the fact that there is no option for the runner's knot here, there's no extra lace loop. So this here, unless you get absolutely tight across your forefoot, it, it can be somewhat loose up here, okay? But that that's not the problem for me. What I find the problem is when I put my orthotics in, the top of my orthotic on the outside of the shoe is right there. So they've got these plastic bits and the whole point of those is to lock your heel in, okay? You put your foot in, your heel sucks in, they actually go back, they're angled, you can see there that they're angled and your heel's supposed to sit in there, okay? If I didn't have my orthotics in there, my heel would sit here and it'd be fine. It would be locked in, it wouldn't be a problem. Because of the orthotics and the way they're shaped and the way they're shaped up, my heel tends to sit about there. Now, standard running, normal paces, my average pace, um, sitting somewhere between 5 and 5.30 a K, mostly straight lines. Most of my running, not an issue. Uh, I took these out to test them out at a faster pace run, so anything up to a tempo run, I'm fine. Um, anything up to about 4 minute Ks, not a problem in. Where the problem came in was when I dropped below that uh, four minute mark. So somewhere I was sitting around at 3.40 to 3.45, went to go around a corner and basically just felt my whole foot and I could feel the back of my foot float up and just scoot out across the top of these um, plastic bits. Didn't scoot out that far, didn't cause an issue, but did cause me to panic and caused me to slow down for those next reps. I did not complete the rest of that workout at uh, the pace that I wanted to. So that is a bit of a concern and it is a weakness that I see with these shoes with orthotics in them. That being said, it's not gonna stop me using them. I love these shoes, okay? The weight, I do not notice the weight. Putting it out there, I'm 86 kilos, okay? I'm a bit heavier, so in um, America that would be the equivalent of 190 pounds. So um, I've got a bit of weight on me, so I don't notice an extra 415 grams sitting on my feet. I just don't notice that. I, I'm not someone who's um, out there just to get the lighter shoes. I want something that's durable. And these shoes, they're gonna be durable. 150 Ks and there's barely a mark on them. Absolutely love them for that. Um, the the foam, the midsole, still feels just as good. I've done some incredible hill runs in these. Um, I did a 46K run, 43K, sorry, run in these up and down hills. No issues whatsoever. To me, I think they're a fantastic shoe. Um, would highly recommend them to anybody. Would I pay $260 for them though? No, but I'm a tight ass, so I wouldn't pay that for any pair of shoes except possibly the ASICS Meta Racer. They just look cool. If Kate had let me buy them for 280 bucks, love it. Anyway, would I pay $156 for them again? Yes, I would any day of the week. They're a really comfy shoe, great daily trainer, and I'm gonna use them and get as much use as I can out of them because they are fantastic. If you are a heavier runner, so somewhere um, up above that 80 to 85 kilos, kilo mark, and you do tend to strike on your heel, it's got a lot of cushioning in the heel. They're really good for you in that respect. Um, and they just push off really nicely. Um, and they're just a really comfy pair of everyday running shoes and they do most things.
like I say, if I wasn't wearing the orthotics, it wouldn't be a problem. Thanks for watching right to the end of the video. Um, if you have any questions or comments about the Adidas Ultra Boost 20, or if you like this sort of thing, if you think this is a need that you, you want filled, um, running shoe reviews with orthotics, please comment down below and let me know. Um, yeah, I'd love to hear your thoughts because I couldn't find many um, that were that helpful. Okay, let me know what you'd like to see. Um, if you have any questions, put them down below and I'll do my best to answer them. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time, guys.